What's up everybody? In this video, I wanna talk about loudness in mixing and mastering. And if one of your goals is to be able to produce clean and high fidelity, high quality masters that are also loud, then you're gonna to wanna to tune in for this discussion. I wanted to start off by challenging the really mistaken and misguided assumption that it's normal or necessary to be able to push a limiter more than a few dB of gain reduction on your master to achieve these types of loud results. When I'm talking about loudness, I'm talking in the range of negative eight luffs, maybe upwards of negative five luffs in the drops of songs or the chorus of songs. That's what I'm meaning by this range of loudness. And this is a very typical range of loudness when you get into the field of pop, hip hop, and electronic music, and that's the field that I do engineering in. It's very common to see those types of loudness levels depending on the genre. When I was first starting to produce, I was guilty of many of the mistakes that novice producers and engineers are when it comes to trying to master or engineer your own music. I pushed limiters on the master because that's how I thought that everybody operated. I was getting five, six, sometimes more decibels of gain reduction in my limiter. And as soon as you start verging into that territory of gain reduction with any limiter, including the best limiters on the planet, I use all of them. Then you start to get the telltale signs of garbage loudness, loudness done wrong, bad loudness. You get intermodulation distortion. You get aliasing. You get dulled transients. You get unwanted pumping. And all of these artifacts that uh, are associated with a song that has just been pushed too loud and uh, it sounds bad to everyone, including myself. I don't advocate that type of loudness, but it's not necessary. As I eventually learned from studying other engineers and just pushing my own edge in terms of my capacity to engineer music and just learning more techniques and, and software, uh, I'm now capable of mixing and mastering songs in that loudness range that I mentioned and having them sound very clean. And uh, in my opinion, I, I'm not making sacrifices to be able to do that. There's always a trade-off between loudness and, and quality, but uh, there's an acceptable range where you're not sacrificing a huge noticeable amount of quality to achieve uh, a particular level of loudness that might be appropriate for the genre that you are engineering for. So we're gonna dig into a session and I'm gonna show you two different mixes of the same song. And in one of the mixes, it's the original mix um, that I received from the artist. None of these techniques have been applied or a few of these techniques have been applied. And then I redid, re-engineered the mix on the song. And I'm gonna show you the difference that that made in its capacity for loudness. I'm gonna talk to you about really one central philosophical error or mistake that a lot of producers and engineers make that prevent them from getting clean loudness. All right, let's hop into it and check out the mix. All right, so here's our session. In Pink Up Top, we've got a really well-engineered reference track from a producer that I love, and I, I really like using this to compare my masters against. In Purple, we have the original artist mix, and then in Green, we have my re-engineered mix. And between the Purple and the Green mix, I wanted to compare them as closely as possible, kind of the best apples-to-apples -apples comparison that I could come up with. So I've taken both of them and I've normalized them so that the sample peak level on each is up at zero dBFS. So we've pushed them both up to the zero dBFS point and trying to get them so that they their sample peak level at least is matching. And then what I've done is I dialed in my mastering chain for my version, the green version, and then I copied that mastering chain over to the purple artist mix. So again, we can compare with the mastering chain on as closely as possible to an apples to apples comparison. And then what I did is I adjusted the limiter threshold on the purple version so that we were getting the same amount of limiting gain reduction as we were on my green master. So let's start by having a listen with the mastering chains off on both and just listening to the, uh, to the mix. Okay. So here's the original artist mix. Okay, so what are we noticing is 
the difference, main difference between the two? Well, there's big spectral differences between the two because uh, of some stuff I'll explain in a second. But there's a massive loudness difference, right? So if we take a look at the loudness of the mix, we're seeing negative 14 and a bit integrated luffs in the drop versus on mine, we're seeing negative 11 or so. A uh, few differences, a uh, few reasons for that. One of them is that the original mix was really, really um, light. It was quite anemic in the bass department. And that wasn't conforming at all to the reference track. The reference track has a lot more bass. And so I increased the amount of low end substantially in my re-engineered mix. That's partially what's responsible for the uh, increase in loudness. And then there's a, another aspect to it, which is I have uh, used a bunch of techniques to be able to control and contain peak level in my mix and those techniques were not applied in the original artist mix, okay? So I, they've allowed me to reduce peak level in a way where I still have crest factor, in a way where I still have punch in my drums, but I've been able to take the entire mix and uh, and and push it up because I've been reining in these peaks, and uh, that's really helped out a lot in terms of its, uh, its perceived loudness. Now let's listen uh, with the mastering chains on, okay? So I'm going to turn both mastering chains on, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, Voxango Span and the limiter. Okay, so the limiter, I'm using DMG Limitless in this case. Uh, I always test a bunch of limiters, but in this case, I'm using uh, I'm using Limitless. And I'm going to open up Span as well. And uh, Span, the way I have Span set up is uh, I have the reference track loaded in to the sidechain input. I have a, a whole video on how to do this routing, by the way. It's, it's a bit complex. And if you want to learn how to do this with Voxango Span, which is free, um, I'll put a link to this, uh, the video that I have on that in the cards and in the description. But uh, basically, you'll see the reference track spectrum come in in a green line and the mix that we're playing is in a blue solid area. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how we're going to set this up. Let's do the same thing over on my re-engineered mix. So we'll just pop uh, Limitless open like so. And then we will also pop Oxango Span open. And I, I want you to pay attention to uh, a few different things here. So uh, first, I want you to pay attention to the spectrum and the spectral differences between the mix that we're working on and the reference track. Okay, so so pay very close attention to the two spectrums. And again, green is the reference track and blue is our track. And then um, in Limitless, I want you to be paying attention to these meters here, which will show how much gain reduction is happening in the limiter. Okay, and then the amount of uh, luffs, loudness, that's happening uh, at the end of the limiting process. Okay, so let's let's have a listen to the uh, to the original artist mix. Okay, so we're seeing um, a few different things and hearing a few different things. First of all, uh, if we fire this off the original uh, artist mix, I want you to look at the massive discrepancy there is in low end and mids and the amount of additional high end that there is. In general, I found, yeah, there was just lacking in low end. It was lacking in loudness in general. And uh, it had a really, really bright um, top end. The hi-hats were, were really high in level and really abrasive. So just look at the spectral differences. Okay, and we're also noticing here that the loudness that we can push to, we're getting about three decibels of gain reduction on the limiter. I've adjusted the limiter thresholds so that we're getting about three decibels of gain reduction on both masters. So we're getting an apples to apples comparison as much as possible. And when we get that amount of gain reduction, we're getting a master here that's negative eight, negative nine luffs, right? Whereas in the re-engineered mix, we're getting uh, much, much louder than that with the same level of limiting, right? And and this is an acceptable level of limiting. 3 dB, 2 dB of limiting, that's acceptable. I'm not hearing 
limit our artifacts from that. Now, if we start pushing it harder, if we try to match the level of loudness in the artist mix to the level of loudness that I'm getting in my re-engineered mix, we'd have to push the limiter much harder. And much harder than this, we're going to start to get artifacts. You're really going to start to notice that. And that's what I try and avoid at all costs. So you're also seeing the the spectrums are much more in conformance. The amount of bass and uh, the amount of high end, uh, we're still a little brighter on the top end, but in general, the spectrums are agreeing with each other. And um, about spectrums, you can only use meters for some things. I'm using them to to just broadly show for you guys because you can't hear in my control room what I'm hearing. Uh, and I'm not even, I don't mix this stuff on headphones. I'm mixing this on, on main monitors that are full range. Um, it's just showing you... Uh, a comparison point that can help to guide you and help you avoid um, any any type of broad spectral mistakes like this that are that are taking it away from from where the genre would be. Okay, so now that we know the differences between these two, what what did I do in my version that hasn't been done in the original mix? Well, if you start to take a look at them, you pretty visually you can start to see. Well, there's these little stray peaks all over the place when you start to pay attention. These little little peaks that are just above, significantly above the average level, obviously, but they're also significantly above the average peak level. And those that pop up every you know four, six, uh, seven beats, these little summing points, they're they're likely from individual transients like drums or or percussive elements. Or they're from elements that are stacking on top of each other that have momentary peaks that are at the same same place. And when they sum together to the master, you get these weird little stray peaks. And if you leave those to be dealt with in the mastering process, you're going to be left with a, a mix that can't be pushed as loud. Because the only way to deal with this is to ram them into a limiter or a clipper. And at a mastering level, you're really going to hear that. There's only so much you can get away with there. So the big misconception and the big mistake is that you can just not attend to sample peak level and micro transients in your mix and just leave loudness all up to the mastering phase. And that you can take your mix and just run it into a limiter and you're going to be able to get loud enough and be able to get a clean track. And you're just not. That's not realistic. So part of this is about managing expectations. And so when you look at these, let's look at some of these little stray peaks. Let's let's really go in on this and uh, and take a look. How long is this in, in duration, right? If we scroll right in, these are sample points. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's three samples. You're never going to hear that missing, okay, when you take that out. Um, and, and then take a look at where the where the peak level is in uh, in the re-engineered master. It's, it's nowhere near the same amount um, because that's been attended to using a variety of techniques um, that uh, that I've come to use. Uh, hard clipping is one of those techniques. Uh, manual limiting, manual compression is another one of those techniques. And um, you do this in the mix. You don't do this on your master. If you do it in the mix and you're working on individual sounds, it's going to be really transparent. If you try and deal with these transients, these, these micro overs uh, that are happening uh, on the master level, you're, you're going to hear it. So if we look all throughout the pre-master, the mix... You're, you're seeing a ton of these little stray peaks. You know, let's let's zone in on another one. Again, th these are almost always a couple of milliseconds to a couple or maybe downwards of a couple of samples long. You take a look at this again. You know, these are sample points. One, two, three. You can see one, two, three. There's about two decibels difference or more between my re-engineered mix and the original. And that has allowed me to push the level up through that normalization process. Uh, of my re-engineered mix much, much higher in level. And I don't have to push the limiter as hard. So it's kind of like a have your cake and eat it too techniques. It's the best of both worlds. You can get a, a very loud, very clean sounding master and you don't have to make these sacrifices that you would make by pushing a mix into a limiter harder and getting all of the negative artifacts that correspond with that. Right on. Well, I hope this is sinking in now that the potential for loudness really starts very early in the production phase. And certainly a lot of that potential is created in the mixing process. And there are particular techniques 
and tools that you need to be aware of to be able to create a mix that can be pushed into a mastering chain in a way that it is made loud without making sacrifices. You're not going to be creating those artifacts that I talked about earlier in this video. Any mastering engineer can take a mix and push it loud and make all of these sacrifices and it can be a bad garbage sounding loud track. You know, Lander can do that. Any automated mastering service can do that. Any limiter can make a bad loud track. But if you want high fidelity, high quality, clean loud masters, then you need to be very specific in how you handle that. Right, so I showed you the before and after of applying a lot of these techniques, but I didn't show you and really go into detail about what these techniques are and how to achieve those. So I've actually filmed a completely separate video that I would recommend that you watch next which will go into some of the main techniques, the, the primary techniques that I'm using to be able to create uh, this potential for loudness and to be able to transparently rein in these peak levels, these micro transients, in a way that uh, allows you when you go to the mastering process to be able to do this really clean, really nice and get great sounding results. So watch that video next. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please do and slap the thumbs up button if you like this video. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this one and if there's anything else that you'd like to see from me next. Until then, happy music making. I'll catch you soon.